and welcome back to the Weird Saints. Today we're going to be talking about St. Odra of Scotland as she is a patron of the blind and visually impaired. St. Odra of Scotland was born in the year 660 and she was born blind. Because of this, her father has sent her on a pilgrimage to Liege um, to visit the relics of St. Lambert. When she came to the grave of St. Lambert, she was miraculously healed um, and she had vowed to dedicate her whole life to God. But her father had different ideas. He wanted her to get married. She and her maid ran away across the North Sea. Yeah, they did. After a pilgrimage to Rome, a Monte St. Angelo, Oda prayed in various villages in Netherlands and Belgium before finally settling in a town called Vernay only to be disturbed by magpies who are have like a black and white feathers on them um after this um she was driven out into an open field where she laid to rest and then the villagers who were inside the village built a hut and god sent god sent um elements to protect her for example, snow, rain, hail, and also Oda planted some bushes there so she could be concealed from she the could be protected from yeah, the outer world. Yes. Following day, the bushes had grown and they were really thick, and her father had come looking for her. And just like the story of Saint Dimphna, her location was con uh, concealed; she couldn't be found. And wasn't there, wasn't she found because she carried coins from Scotland all the way to her place? Yeah. And where the villagers found it? Yeah. So do you want to carry on from that point? Um, yeah. But then how her father tried to come over and tried to beg her to come back and marry a person that he wanted. But uh, magpies, who were the ones who tormented her in the first place, has started to torment her father, right? Yeah, drove him away. And he returned to Scotland without her. And she remained there as a hermit nurse. Um, she always has a magpie on her hand and always a crown underneath her feet. Would you like to carry on? Yes. Yeah. So after St. Oda's death, um, her humble hut, or like where, she used, where she lived, um, to stay away from her father. It had then become a pilgrimage place. And this is placed in the woods and this became and this town became known um, as Saint Oweden Road. Wasn't that like oh. um like memory of Saint Oda who came yeah. to live nearby there? And that's her pilgrimage place mm -hmm. and this is in the Netherlands. Pieces of her skull and her teeth are kept in St Martin's Church which is in the village nearby. Various statues and paintings are kept in the church and people visit her hut um, as like an intercession for removal of eyes, of eye pain and illnesses related to the head. So Nina, what can we learn from her life? We can learn that, you know how she ran away from her father? Yeah. Um, well, before that, she she dedicated her life to God, right? Yes. Be and why was that? Because she was healed yeah. of her blindness. Mm -hmm. So what um, St. Oda does is, even though she made that promise to God, she was serious about it. Mm -hmm. And something that we should remember to do in life is, if we make a promise to someone, we should be serious about cre keeping that promise. And that can actually bring us great fortunes, as in like, it can help us a lot in our life. And after she get, and after she dedicated her own life to God, God gave her courage to run away, right? Yeah. And which had then helped her to dedicate her life to God and do what she had promised. So God has his own plans for us. Yeah. Through a different way. As long as we uh, put our hearts to it, put our mind to it. Yeah. Yeah. So on that note, I'd like to say, St. Oda of Scotland, pray for us.